Hey, my name is Josh Colby with Adam Audio, and today we're going to talk about aux sends. So for example, today we're going to show on the snare drum, we want to put some reverb on it. So how do you do that? We're going to create an aux send. So in our video, we showed you how to make a bus. It's the same way you create an aux send. It's, it's just how you use it. So in this instance, we've got our drum verb ready. So you can name these anything you want, snare verb, drum verb, tom verb. We're just gonna do it drum verb um, for, you know, just for today's sake. So first thing we can do, we need to find our sense tab in our DAW. So on Pro Tools, it's right under your inserts. So there's multiple ways we can do this. We can either create a bus, actually like take one of these buses. So for example, assign that say, for example, bus seven and eight, and we know that that'll always go to drum verb seven and eight, we have to assign it on the input. Or we can go down the track and just physically find the actual track that you're doing. So let's look for drum verb right here. Perfect. So one of the reasons you'd wanna use an aux in this situation, and when it's different from like busing, for example, is we're using this essentially in parallel to our, you know, to our snare drum track because you know, with a snare drum, it's a dominant source. We really don't want to put the reverb directly on the track. It'd be hard to really mix it in and dial it right. And, you know, you can use wet dry parameters, but, you know, I guess there's no right or wrong way to do things, but it's just, it's a good, it's a good common practice. So first we're going to send a send, and this is what's going to send to our aux track in parallel to our snare. So a couple important par parameters to take a look at. So pre and post fader is really important because this is going to define how that, how the, actual output is going to go to the aux track. So when we have it on pre-fader, this is 100% controlling how much is going to the aux send, regardless of the output that you have on your, on your main fader of the track. If you take this off and have it post, it's cool to keep this at unity, just so you don't have to worry about it, kind of set it, forget it. And then this is going to control both what's coming out of the main track, and it's going to control in parallel what's going to that aux track that you have your verb on or anything else. So let's, let's show what that looks like. So now that we've got the sign there, we're going to keep it in post fader for now. Let's throw a verb on our thing. So for today's sake, we're just going to pop a stock verb on. Here we go, D verb. And let's just start playing with it. Okay, so now we've got a verb up. You know, we just put a, you know, just mess with some parameters, you know, to, and then we can adjust it to taste. So we'll just start there. Yeah, so you can see, so we've got it in parallel. So the reason why you'd want to do this instead of throwing it on the track, unless you're using like it for a specific effect or sound, is, you know, you just have full control over it. You can adjust how much verb you want going on without, you know, worrying about what you're doing on the actual channels, you know, the actual like inserts and stuff. Those won't really necessarily affect it to an extent. And then so right now we have it on post. So I'll show you what I was meaning by the pre and post and why this is really important. So as we brought down the main volume, less you know the, the same signal lessened in the aux track. So when we have in pre, you can adjust it when it's in you know pre fader independently. So it's really cool. Then it really you can help fine tune how much you want in there. So say if you did have to bring the level down, but you're really liking how the snare is affecting the overall mix, the snare verb. You don't, you know, you don't have to worry about it adjusting. Now it's cool for those times where you want everything to adjust equally as much too. So like I said, it's, it's just a matter of preference, but that's the basics of auxes. You can do this with vocals. You can do this with pretty much any kind of, um, any kind of effect you want in parallel. You don't want it to directly affect the output of the mix. You can do it in parallel fashion. So that is the basics of aux tracks. I hope that helps you.